Good morning. Today is the 10th of uh, December, about 11.07 uh, here in New York. Uh, it's a Saturday morning. And uh, my name is Irfan, and I will be your trainer for the next uh, four weeks. Uh, we will be doing SOAP UI web service testing. All right. Um, for those of you folks who are joining us uh, for the very first time, um, you know how we run these uh, uh, courses. Uh, it is going to be two hours on um, each uh, day and we will be meeting twice in a week and this being a weekend course it will be on Saturdays and Sundays uh, between the hours of uh, 11 a.m. and 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So uh, two hours on Saturdays, two hours on Sundays is what we will be doing. Since uh, it's a December month, um, month of holidays, uh, is a good uh, chance that um, we might not be able to do uh, the classes uh, uh, during the Christmas and the New Year's um, holidays. So uh, very quickly, let me walk you through. Today is the day one. 11th would be day two. 17th and 18th would be day three and day four. Uh, we will not be meeting on 24th, 25th, and 31st and 1st will not be meeting. So half of the course will be in this year, and the next half would be uh, in the next year. Okay, um, now that doesn't stop you from learning because uh, we will be sharing with you the videos uh, immediately, um, meaning once you register, once you make the payments and all that, you will have access to the videos. So for those of you folks who uh, have already registered with us, um, you know that uh, you could be watching your videos from screencast. Um, so. I will uh, quickly show you where you would be seeing those uh, videos. Um, um, hang on for a second. Um, so basically, once you log in uh, to your account in Screencast, you should be able to uh, watch the videos. So the videos are, um, hang on for a second here. Um, the videos, uh, since we provide training on multiple courses, um, you find all of these folders, but the ones that you are looking for is, uh, you should have access to, uh, let me just do it in this order, and you should have access to all of uh, the SOAP UI recent batches we will be sharing you, just so that uh, you get an idea, uh, let me just pull any one of them. Um, as you can see, uh, there will be eight uh, uh, videos. Each video would be two hour long, and we will share with you at least like two or three different sets. Um, chances are we are covering different web services in those uh, uh, you know different sessions, so it's good to watch uh, uh, these uh, videos. So you will be um, you will be in advance be given access to those videos uh, once you register. Now, what are we going to be covering as a part of this course? I will not be reading bullet by bullet as what it is, uh, but you could find that information under courses. If you go to SOAP UI web service on trainingright.com, you should be able to find that information. So as um, you see here, all of these uh, topics are basically going to be covered, right? So there's a lot of stuff that we will be covering in here. Um, SOAP UI is the tool that we will be using. Uh, but Basically, what we will be doing in this course um, is trying to learn as how to test a web service. So we should begin with what is a web service. And uh, uh, if you have been tasked to test a web service, um, where should you begin? How should you go about uh, testing that web service? Now, before we do that, um, we have to uh, set up the environment, meaning that we got to be downloading the tools. So uh, the uh, testing of the web services can be done using many different tools. Uh, but since this course is particularly about SOAP UI, I will be showing you about um, the SOAP UI tool, where to download, what are the different versions of SOAP UI tool that you need to download. And once we have that thing uh, going on, and then we will uh, get started as far as uh, today's class is concerned. Okay, so for your SOAP UI, you would go to a site called SOAPUI.org. Uh, SOAP UI is uh, one of the tools this Smart Bear as the company offers. So 
they have many other tools so if you go to smartbear.com you will see that one of the most popular tools that they have is basically soap ui uh, but they have many other uh, you know services and tools that they provide if you are doing uh, let's say a ui testing something similar to selenium and um, uh, qtp uh, from smartbear is test complete and um, there are companies out there that they use it now test management is let's say uh, quality control uh, so if you if you have uh, used uh, quality center from hp uh, qc or bugzilla or jira so this is a test management tool uh, from smartware called qa complete um, so there are some other tools like for the cross uh, browser testing and all that so these are the ui testing but particularly they are they are very popular for api testing api stands for application programming interface so uh, we'll be talking about what uh, basically this api means uh, when I cover the architecture, which I will be doing uh, sometime soon today. So uh, over here, when you are doing the web service testing, there are different types of uh, tools that you could be using. If you are going to be um, doing the functional testing, then you would be using SOAP UI. If you're going to be doing some load testing, then you could be using the load UI. Um, likewise, if you uh, are planning to do something called mock testing, meaning that uh, the web services are not ready yet, but you still would like to uh, test them using something called mock services, then they have something called the service v uh, virtual services or service uh, v uh, pro version of it. So we'll be looking into all of these things um, as uh, we progress. Uh, so coming back to how to download, if you go in here, to soapui.org, you could go ahead and then you could download uh, the software to, um, you know, basically go and uh, do the testing. Now, there are two different versions that they have. There's an open source and then there's a professional version. Open source, as you know, it is free. Uh, you could just download it, install it, and run it. It's never going to expire. Um, now, Whereas the professional version, of course, is license-based, so you've got to be paying for it to download and install. Fortunately, unfortunately, this comes uh, as an evaluation uh, version as well. So we have about uh, 14 days to evaluate that. Now, if we go and compare between the two, this is basically the list uh, that you could be looking into as what each one would be able to do and whatnot. But the whole course is about that. So if you ask me, uh, like, which version are you uh, going to be covering, uh, I would say that I would cover uh, this and I would cover that. And if I have to put a number, probably um, you could do 50-50, 50% of this and 50% of that. Um, we might we might be doing um, a little bit more of the professional only because it has a lot more features in it. Uh, so I'll be doing a little bit more of that. But I will be covering uh, both the open source as well as professional. So why don't we just go and download um, these things. Before we do that, um, I also want to bring to your attention the fact that uh, there are some very nice getting started um, you know, uh, documentation here. Uh, there are some very good tutorials in there, um, so you could you could follow that and you could do it uh, what they are uh, showing you. Uh, in my case, I will basically grab your hand and I will walk you through step by step as how to do it. Um, there are, I mean, not to uh, toot our own horn here, but uh, there are students who have taken a training uh, from SmartBear and they still they came and then they took the training from us. Um, the reason being, um, I will uh, take you uh, as if you have absolutely zero knowledge of anything and I will very quickly bring you up to a point where you will start to deal with uh, some uh, you know heavy stuff. 
So we will be uh, gradually, step by step, we'll be taking baby steps and gradually uh, will be heavy lifting. Um, so um, stay with me, follow what I tell you to do, and I guarantee that at the end of uh, this uh, four weeks, uh, you can literally call yourself as an um, intermediate to pretty co uh, close to calling yourself as an advanced level of um, SOAP UI tester. Okay, uh, as any automation, um, there will be uh, some programming or some scripting that we, we got to be doing. So in our case, uh, I will make an assumption that you have uh, no knowledge of uh, scripting. Um, the language that we have to use is called Groovy. So we'll be using, we'll be learning Groovy in here. Not just be learning Groovy, we'll be learning a lot of Groovy in this. So you, if you say that I never heard of the name Groovy, I would say that it is pretty close to uh, Java. If you have done any Java programming, if you have taken any uh, Selenium courses uh, with Java, or with C Sharp, uh, you will find that Groovy is pretty close to that, um, um, but uh, much more flexible than um, your Java and your C++ uh, or your C Sharp, because uh, in Groovy, um, you can do a lot more with less coding, and that's basically what we will be doing when we will be writing some code where we have to do uh, data-driven testing where we have to go and get the data from um, either uh, a CSV file or an Excel file or from a database. At that time, we will be writing the code in Groovy to get connected to uh, JDBC. Uh, using the JDBC drivers, we'll be getting connected to either SQL Server database or Oracle database or um, uh, other databases like MySQL and stuff like that. So we will be writing some code at that time. Now, there, uh, when it comes to web services, uh, there are two types of web services. There is uh, uh, something called a REST service, uh, as well as there is something called XML-based web services. Now, uh, we will be covering both of them. Uh, we will start off with XML uh, web services first, uh, and then we will be getting into REST services, uh, wherein the data uh, we will be receiving will be in something called a JSON format. Um, so uh, Java, uh, JavaScript uh, object notation, J-S-O-N, JSON format. So it's nothing but an object encapsulating some data. So we will be uh, dissecting that object programmatically, and we will be uh, writing the code to extract the data from the JSON format. Now, it might sound a um, little bit challenging uh, at this point to you when I say all of those things, but uh, uh, I assure you that uh, you will have a good time learning all of these things. Now, why are we doing this? Uh, the reason uh, we are here, gathered here to do this, is either you already are in a project where you have to do some web service testing, or you're looking for opportunities. Now, uh, whatever be the case, let me just take you to dice.com, and uh, um, it really doesn't matter what part of the country you are living in. Um, so I will um, go ahead and not filter and just say, uh, SOAP UI. So we are we are testing all over uh, in United States as where the jobs are, and uh, it shouldn't come as a surprise that there are huge uh, number of jobs all over United States. Really, doesn't matter if it is Georgia or Arizona or California or uh, help me now. <laughs> Uh, Louisiana um, and uh, so it could be any part of the country Colorado Ohio Virginia Minnesota Florida Wisconsin uh, Massachusetts Michigan Pennsylvania Nebraska so really 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 doesn't matter Oregon as away from the rest of the world as in Oregon no offense to folks living in Oregon but um, somebody who is living in New York, Oregon is like a distant world. I mean, it's completely on the other side of the continent uh, uh, as far as I am concerned because uh, 
takes about uh, five hours to get to Europe and probably takes more than that to get to um, Oregon from New York. Anyway, so it, this is not a class of geography. Uh, what I wanted to highlight um, with this is uh, jobs are all over, right? Any part of the country you could find uh, uh, high paying jobs as long as you know uh, how to do the web service testing using SOAP UI as the tool. And they can be uh, pretty specific, uh, like uh, in this case, they have mentioned that you should be knowing the pro version of it, right? Sometimes they just say SOAP UI. So it, it is better to have a knowledge of both the versions and that's the reason um, you know, we will be covering both the pro as well as the uh, open source. Of course, uh, there are a lot more features in the pro version that you will not find in the uh, open source version. That's why they charge you. Um, and and it's, it's not a crazy licensing fee as uh, what HP would do if you're buying uh, QTP or UFT. Uh, you've got to be um, shelling out thousands of dollars before you could buy the software from HP for UFT, whereas this is just a few hundred dollars. So um, the idea here is uh, you got to be uh, basically uh, learning both the versions um, and uh, we will be downloading and we will be installing both. So let's uh, get started with the download. So if I go here, download SOAP UI, um, you see that it gives me both the options. One is you get it right away. The other one is you can try it, meaning that it's going to expire after a while. So let's take a look into uh, how many days we're going to be getting before it expires and what can we do about it. So basically, uh, you could be downloading it and if you feel like uh, you know purchasing it, you could also uh, purchase uh, this. It costs you about less than $500, right? That's what it is It is going to cost you if you intend to purchase this tool. Um, you know, you could, you have 14 days uh, to evaluate uh, and then you could buy it uh, from there. So uh, what I would suggest, so it's about like $500, right? So what I suggest is, um, I'll show you uh, probably in the next class, I will show you um, if you wish to keep using this software, right? For a uh, learning purpose, uh, you know, um, there is a way to do that. Um, and that is basically if you, um, oops, uh, if you uh, have something like um, a virtual box, uh, if you have a virtual box, um, or if you uh, heard of Docker, D-O-C-K-E-R, uh, or um, so tools like that would help you, um, you know, install it and then throw it away uh, once it expires and uh, kind of like, you know, get a, a new copy again and install it if you want. Uh, but the best option is uh, if you could purchase it. And if you are a company, of course, uh, you know, you cannot be doing, uh, for learning purpose, it is all right if you are uh, using, uh, you know, a virtual machine to, you know, download and install the software and after it expires, you want to uh, spin another virtual machine and then download it. For learning purpose, it is okay because you're a student, you're learning, you're evaluating. But if you're a company, if you're making use of this software, then $499 is no big money. You have to come up with that money to buy the license of it and then you could use it for one year. And then after that, you could keep uh, you know, renewing it. Uh, and this $499, uh, if you're a company and if you are doing a web service testing, this will pay off in just two hours. Believe it or not, it will just pay off in two hours. The reason for that is the amount of... Um, uh, features that you get with the pro version are unimaginable. I mean, you know, uh, the the other version, which is the open source, uh, it, it's a good, uh, it's a good, what, what uh, how do we call it? It's a good uh, software, but it lacks uh, so many things, even to do a uh, minor thing as data-driven testing, you have to write so much of code when you're using the open source, right? Which I'll, I'll show you, I'll teach you, 
I will make you understand that. By the way, this course, this course is, uh, uh, I am a um, little bit uh, hesitant to use 100%, so I will use 99%. The course is 99% uh, hands-on. The only day uh, you will find me talking is uh, the first day because I have to lay out the plot. I have to explain what you guys are getting into. Um, so I have to talk and I have to show you a few things here. But after today, in fact, maybe after the first hour, you'll find that the whole course is um, you know, 99% hands-on, meaning that we have to do things. And I expect the same from all of you, uh, because once you are a part of this course, once you register for the course, starting from tomorrow, we will be uh, sending you the links to all uh, registered students, and we will be giving you some assignments, and we'll be giving you some projects and uh, stuff like that. So. Um, each one of you will be working on the assignments. There are going to be eight uh, assignments as a part of this course, and those assignments will cover scenarios that you would possibly come across when you're working in, on your real-life project. So at your work, in your project, if you are um, basically testing a, a REST a web service wherein you have to filter out the data that you're receiving um, in the JSON format, and uh, you have to write the groovy code to filter out that data. So we will, I will be showing you how to do all that as a part of this uh, uh, class, live presentation, and you are expected to work on that and submit the assignment. So at the tail end of every session, I will be giving you an assignment, and usually takes about a good uh, two to three hours for you to complete the assignment. Uh, if you get stuck at any given point during the assignment, you will be made a member of our private forums. So um, let me, uh, you know, let me just uh, sign into my uh, Gmail account so that I could show it to you. Um, we have uh, a Google Drive. So if you see in here, uh, go here and go there. And if you see, uh, there is a, this is the Google Drive. And as you can see, uh, I am the owner of this uh, Google Drive. So we have, uh, for every course, we have a Google Drive. So let me just take you into SOAP UI and show you that there are a lot of documentation here. Right? There's a lot of documentation in terms of um, what you should be seeing and whatnot, just so that uh, you get an idea. Uh, not that there is a need for you to do it, but if you need to uh, you know, integrate with Eclipse, uh, how to do that, there's a, a documentation of that as how to integrate uh, your SOAP UI with Eclipse. So here is uh, basically uh, the documentation of that as how to do that right, step-by-step uh, -step explanation. So I will walk you through, and then you will have the backup uh, uh, in terms of this documentation, you would have that. Uh, so um, basically, so you have to be looking into this documentation. Another thing that you should be doing is, uh, if you type groups.google.com, you would, um, again, you'd see that since I am the owner of all of these groups, I am seeing all of these groups. In your case, uh, you will be seeing, um, once you register, you will be seeing the SOAP UI web service testing tool. Now, uh, let's say we have um, a question about uh, data-driven testing with Excel. So DDT, Excel, let's, let's say you, you do that. You will find that, uh, maybe let me just do just Excel, right? You'll find that uh, there are so many uh, things from the previous students, uh, you know, whatever you see here. Um, I am in urgent need to parameterization of data from Excel to pass and request and also do some assertion. I tried many course, da 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 da, da right? So uh, if you see here, there will be, uh, a request like that and somebody would have you know given 
some ideas as how to do it right so you will you will see uh, you know this person is saying that hey in order to do this you got to be downloading this and that so i would have covered already as how to do that uh, and to actually see it you would you should be able to go and do a little bit more into digging into it and you would find uh, you know some uh, code like that that will address you uh, see see the thread here so how many times uh, people are looking into it and stuff like that. So you should be able to do things like that. And if I, uh, let me just uh, open this, uh, the part of the code he has, he or she, this person had, uh, you know, mentioned this. So this is how the coding looks like. Uh, if you take a look, uh, this is the groovy, G-R-O-O-V-Y, groovy scripting right so we will uh, do everything right from the beginning I'm gonna walk you through step by step uh, so the idea behind me showing this is to uh, instill some comfort uh, level in you that uh, there is a lot of help uh, um, that you would get from your peers uh, once you join uh, so there's a community here that uh, basically will guide you if you ever get stuck um, you know while uh, doing anything so make sure that you use uh, make good use of this uh, uh, very vibrant community that we have in here uh, because we've been providing this training for many 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 years uh, so make use of that uh, apart from your live sessions so you have live sessions you have videos and you have uh, the community uh, from where you could seek help uh, in case if you ever get stuck so as you can see there's 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 a lot of stuff in here Okay, now let's uh, come back and uh, uh, let me just close these uh, things and uh, let's download. So here we are. Let me start off with downloading the open source. So uh, get the open source version. Uh, so get it. Um, basically, if you see here, uh, they say that the SOAP UI, the latest version right now is 5.3. So 5.3 and uh, it detected that my machine is a 64 bit and it's giving me a 64 bit um, and the total size of it is 113 so let me uh, just go ahead and then uh, download that once I download it I can take it right click uh, and open and take this and uh, what I intend to do is um, on my C drive if you see uh, we've been providing training in uh, pretty much anything uh, related to testing that is out there so we have all of these things so create a folder uh, called uh, SOAP UI training create a folder on your C drive called SOAP UI training and in that um, of course it is going to be empty for you but as we progress we'll be adding all of these things I'll be showing you like I'm showing you right now that create the SOAP UI and inside SOAP UI create uh, let's say a folder called uh, software so uh, so I will do uh, software and uh, it is SOAP UI software actually so it is there so if I double click as you notice I have downloaded during uh, the year I have downloaded like uh, so many different copies of it so I am going to so as you can see we had a 5.2 5.2.1 uh, 5.2. and if you look into the dates in here that should give you an idea as how things change right so uh, uh, with the date modified this is the most recent version of it right so UI 5.3 is the most recent so let me after I download let me just go ahead and install it so the installation is as simple as double clicking on it and uh, it'll walk you through step by step so what I'm doing right now is installing um, the open source version of it right so this will uh, get installed um, in in a file uh, basically called program file so it'll walk you through as uh, where it is going to install um, the installation process should not take more than you know two minutes uh, because uh, two to three minutes uh, again depending on how fast of a machine uh, you have um, so we'll be done in about next two three minutes with the installation and then we'll start uh, to use uh, this tool as how to test a web service now 
before uh, we go about testing a web service, um, I have to um, walk you through the architecture, right? Um, because uh, there are many, many moving parts uh, in this. Uh, there is something called a web server, and then uh, basically your different types of uh, files that you need to FTP to the server. So we'll be looking into the possibility of uh, when your web service uh, gets created, how it gets deployed, and uh, stuff like that. So right now, let us go and finish the installation. So 5.3, uh, do a next, I accept the licensing, and uh, now it tells you that this is the place that it is going to install it. Program files, smartware folder, SOAPUI 5.3.0, right? Now, uh, just for the heck of it, if I go uh, in there, um, program files, right? So if I go into my C drive and if I go into my program files, right? Um, we might already have a folder called Smart Bear, right? Before even, and as you can see, uh, we have installed the different versions of it. So now this one, 5.3 is going to get installed in here, right? So if I do a next, uh, now it is telling you, uh, do you want uh, the rest of the stuff? Like, do you want the tutorials in there? Do you want the source in there? Uh, default settings are fine, but if you have more space, it uh, doesn't matter to select, you know, everything in there. So you will hit uh, next and accept the license to uh, actually install it at this time. So it is going to create a start menu, um, you know, folder and then uh, basically also create an icon on the desktop and right now it is going through the installation as you can see this 5.3.0 just got dropped here as a folder and it is doing the installation again as I said I'm probably going to take about like two minutes uh, for it to get installed and once it gets installed we'll have a shortcut um, that we could use to open the software now um, before we go about uh, testing a web service, some details about it. So here is the story time right now. So for the next few minutes, I will be walking you through the architecture of uh, uh, a web service uh, testing in terms of like the complete architecture in terms of uh, how the web service uh, is created what it is and how it is deployed and stuff like that and then we'll go and then test it now uh, before we do that uh, quick uh, update uh, any questions that you have so far anything that you would like to ask me if there's any question that you have um, I'll be more than happy to answer your questions um, so uh, let me ask you if you have any questions by the way uh, we this is an interactive session, so I expect you to ask me questions. Uh, and uh, even though we'll have uh, we'll have uh, a specific dedicated time for Q and A at the end of the session, but if you have any questions in between, feel free to ask uh, because I, uh, if I'm I'm in the middle of explaining something, I'll finish up my thought and uh, then I will address your question. So the two ways of asking a question you could raise uh, your hand there's a little icon on your uh, upper right hand side um, of your uh, go to webinar uh, software uh, so you click on that icon uh, that looks like a palm or raise a hand and it will flash next to your name and I will be able to see that you have a question and I can unmute you and you could uh, basically ask your question the other way is you could type your question in that chat window and I will get to see it okay the uh, software is installed so we can run it uh, if I say finish it is going to open it right now so um, Chandan is asking a question what are the similar products that are, uh, similar to SOAP UI um, there is a, a software for uh, from Java called REST Assured R-E-S-T a S S U R E D rest assured and then there is a UFT QTP also has a component that does the uh, you know web service testing um, so uh, these are two uh, kind of like uh, popular ones uh, but then 
Ranorax also has a component that can do it. And many other softwares, uh, they have a component uh, that can do it. But the popular ones is, uh, uh, are these ones. Uh, okay, allow. This is the firewall stopping it. Allow. So when it opened, as you can see, it opened with uh, the most recent um, projects that we did. And these are some of the recent projects that I did uh, with the older version. This is 5.3, right? With 5.2.1, uh, uh, this was the last uh, thing that I did. And these are some of the projects. So I don't, I don't, uh, you know, expect you to know anything about what all this is all about because I would be going and then showing you uh, you know these things so right now uh, we're gonna start right from the beginning but before we do that as I said I will be uh, I will be starting off you know as if there is nothing in here so um, before we start to use the tool, a little bit of knowledge of web services. Uh, I'm not going to bore you with uh, too much of theory, So, but it, it is important what we are going to be learning in the next uh, uh, few minutes. It is important for your background to test the web services. Now, we are going to test a web service. So the big question is, what is a web service? That's a, that's a question, right? I mean, um, if you don't ask, uh, I have that question in my head, like, what is a web service, right? I have to test it, but w w what is it, right? Um, with QTP, with UFT, with Selenium, and stuff like that, we do some testing, and that is UI testing, user interface testing. So that um, probably that's, that's like... Uh, you know, going to any website, let's say as an example, uh, this website, you have to enter a username, you have to enter a password, you have to click on this login, and then it will give you access or it will not give you access. As an example, I will uh, intentionally make a mistake here. Uh, I don't have an AOL account and let's say if I put some password and if I try to log in, uh, it is coming back with a message that, like login fail. Right. Um, so if you have to do this, this is user interface testing, UI testing, and you could be using tools like uh, Selenium for it, or you could be using UFT for it, or you could also be using tools uh, like uh, Cucumber, right, uh, also for it. Uh, so um, as far as web service is concerned, uh, where is web service in it, or if at all, if there is a web service in it, all right. So, uh, to understand the web service testing, this is basically what we have to know. We have to know the big picture. So, uh, a web service is, in simple words, a web service is some code. It's some code. A developer had written some code, right? This code, he or she can uh, create this code using some programming languages, right? So, this, this code can be using Java, it can be using uh, C Sharp, it can be using any programming language like Ruby, Perl, uh, Python, uh, or uh, even PHP. It can be basically any, and the list goes on. They, they could be using a language to write some code. So when somebody writes any code, a developer writes a code, the code is written, the code is written inside a class, right? And trust me, for web service testing, you and I, we need not know about it. So it's like, it's like um, if you go to Japan, right, you would be uh, sitting in a bullet train, right? And as the name goes, it's a bullet train. It, it rides uh, like crazy fast. So if somebody is, is telling you about, oh, a bullet train is going to ride this fast and, uh, you know, the velocity is going to be this high and it tilts this way, that way, you can pay attention to it. It can be interesting um, uh, or you can just ignore and then enjoy the ride, right? Now, if you are going to take that bullet train every day, every day, every day, right? Now you should know a little bit details of, of that bullet train, right? Meaning that in case of an emergency, what, what you should be doing, where you should get off, how you should. So you should know a little bit more. So 
web service testing, if it is like a one-time thing, then you need not care about all of these things. Ah, you know, he's saying these things. I'm going to just listen to it. But if you're going to be doing this testing every day, every day, every day for at least the next uh, uh, few years of your life, then I would say uh, listen to what I am saying. Try to follow what I'm saying because that that will give you, um, you know, some confidence and it'll, it'll give you, um, you know, um, if not for anything, some ideas to appreciate how work is being done that you are going to test, right? So developers will be writing the code inside a class. So there will be one or many classes that they would be writing the code in. So once they create a class, so they will they will have a project first, right? That project could be if Java, they could might they, they might be using Eclipse for it. If it is uh, C sharp, they might be using let's say Visual Studio. Likewise for the different languages. So they will create a project, they'll create a class, and inside the class they will they will write some functions, right? Functions. So as an example, as an example. Let's say, uh, I mean, um, there are many industries, healthcare, telecom, finance, uh, a, a retail, uh, it could be anything. So rather than going into a specific industry and taking in uh, as our very first example, I'll, I'll, and no offense to anyone here, but I will go down to kindergarten level and try to explain it so that we we have some good idea then we will take that and run with it with some real nasty web services and apply the foundations of what we're going to be learning here to those very very intense web services that we will be testing so my first um, explanation need not be about a crazy web service but very basic web service <clears throat> so allow me um, I'm not offending anybody here. Allow me that uh, we are going to be uh, taking an example of a math web service. So let's say there is a web service called math web service, right? So they will create a math web service project, let's say. Inside it, they will create a math web service class, right? Okay, now usually what do you have uh, in terms of a math, what are the basic functions of a math? So there might be a function called addition, correct? Right? And there might be a function, there might be a function called uh, subtraction. There might be a function called uh, uh, multiplication, right? And there might be a function called uh, division, right? And there are many other like square root or cube or this or that let's keep it basic right so the developers if they have to and once we get the idea of this then we will uh, try to take it to the next level with some specific example of some other web service testing that they could be doing right so in a web service developers will be writing a code and that code they could be writing using any of the programming languages and basically what they are doing is they're creating a project and inside that project there could be one or many classes and then they will be having some functions now these functions these functions right what about these functions these functions are nothing but these functions are referred to as operations these functions are nothing but operations that we have to be testing right so uh when they ask us to test a web service inside a web service what you will have is you'll have a bunch of operations operations are nothing but you know these functions so in here addition is an operation right subtraction is an operation so you will be testing a bunch of operations now if i if i go back to addition uh in its very very basic format uh, addition is about what addition is about what addition is about at least two numbers you have to add right so in addition you have to have at least two numbers let's say one of the numbers is integer uh, number number one and the other number is of the type integer number two so 
in this function, basically, I would say, hang on, in this function, one second, in this function, I would say, okay, in this function, we would add, we would add num1 plus num2, right? And we, after we add, we put it into, let's say, something called integer result. Right? So this result is nothing but adding of number one and number two. Now, if you look at it, if somebody tells you to test the addition, so you will say, okay, what number? You'll say 100. And you the other number two is 200. And then 100 plus 200, the answer is 300. So if you have to test this, this web service called a math web service, you will say that, okay, inside that math web service, uh, what operations am I testing? So the documentation will say that you are testing addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. Then the first question after knowing these operations, you will ask is, okay, what parameters this addition as an operation takes, right? What input parameters it will take? And what is the output parameter that I'm going to get out of this function? So in a web service, it is as simple as knowing that inside a web service, there will be one or more operations and each operation will, will expect some parameters, input parameters, and it will give you some result. That's all we have to do, right? In a basic format. Now, the, the input operations, the next thing is, what kind of data type you have to pass to that input operations. Now, if what I have given here, right, integer num1, num2, can I pass to it 197 and 23 as the my first input and the second one is uh, 43.34? The answer to that is no, because it will fail because it takes only integer data type. So it's not just the operations that you know, you also have to know about the uh, parameters that you have to pass to it. And you also have to know about the data types of the parameters that you are passing to it. All right. Okay. Once you have that idea, then you can go about testing it and not only test, but you can also automate all of this uh, provided uh, you have an understanding of all this. And the understanding of all that is, uh, basically in a document called WSDL document. So you should be uh, requesting, you should be asking for a WSDL document. What is a WSDL document? It's a web service description language. So web service description language uh, basically is a document that describes your web service, but this is not necessarily in English. This is in XML. So we have to have some knowledge of XML to uh, dissect, to dissect this, this document and uh, make some sense out of it. When we were cutting the frogs, when we were back in our, I mean, I can talk about myself, uh, uh, when I was, I'm originally from India. So when I was uh, in, in college in India, we had to do some dissections of, uh, um, you know, frogs. Uh, I hated it. I really, really, really hated it, cutting uh, you know, anything like that. Um, so, but I guess I can appreciate it a little bit more now that, uh, uh, you know, inside uh, any uh, frog or for that matter, or, or any animal, you have body parts uh, and those body parts, that's a template, right? So you don't have to cut every frog that is out there. If you cut one frog or two frogs for practice, you get an idea of, oh, this is how a frog's anatomy is. And likewise for any other thing, right? You don't have to cut every human. There is, that's why you have one body and you know years of education happens in medical schools uh, based out of that one uh, dead body because uh, you know they're showing you everything from that dead. So likewise, uh, our dissection of the WSDL, um, you can do it for every web service, but once I explain it to you for one or two web services, then it, it, it comes as 
as easy as it can be because you will get the complete idea of how to how to uh, parse how to parse uh, a visual document okay so um, your your understanding of a web service starts with the visual uh, document so I will very quickly show you a visual document and um, not explain you much about it uh, right now but give you a glimpse of it now uh, so anytime you're you're going to be going to test a web service you should be asking for uh, the wisdom so here are uh, I'll share it with you here are some of the wisdom documents and I'll take the easiest of all which is this one as an example I'm going to take that and I will show it to you um, okay so what you see here and if I scroll down if I scroll down if you see all this is visual all this is visual and uh, this is the visual for this training right math soap UI web service now if I take another visual uh, let's say that right and now as you can see the scroll bar as you can see this is a lot more now right lot more 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 so lot of stuff in here right lot of stuff in here now um, by just looking at it you might think like whoa uh, this is something I don't know uh, if I could pick it up uh, very fast what if, if I tell you that whatever you're seeing here, whatever you're seeing here, I will show you a trick that not just this one, but any visual document that is out there, you would be able to parse that. You would be able to understand that in two minutes, right? In two minutes, because I will teach you a trick that will make you understand how to very quickly read a visual document in in two minutes two to three minutes i mean depending on you know uh, how fast you could do certain things and you should be able to do it in in two to three minutes you should be able to understand everything about that web service right now um inside that web service there is a lot of information as you can see we should know as how to parse a visual document uh, and that visual document, uh, when we are parsing, when we are dissecting it, it is all in XML. And there is a trick to uh, understand what is all inside it. And that's what I will be showing it to you in the, uh, in the next class. Uh, not in this class, in the next class. Uh, so coming back uh, now uh, to this, any question on uh, what is your understanding of a web service? A web service is nothing but some code that a developer had written. It could be using any of the programming languages. In its simplest form, it is nothing but a project which, which has one or more classes. And inside each class, there are going to be some methods. And these methods have been, have been th these methods or functions, um, like in any software, these are private functions. But if you expose these functions, uh, as as the operations of a web service then any other application can use these functions okay now let's pause there you would say that hey whatever you have shown me it looks pretty much like a regular um, you know developers job right uh, so why a web service I mean what is a web service I mean I, I understood that it is some code it is written in some but what is the purpose of a web service what does it do it's some code but what does it do okay that's an interesting question as what a web service uh, can do and uh, to answer that question let us uh, go and look into uh, this scenario let's say there is a company right uh, a company like uh, like uh, uh, as an example like uh, uh, Priceline right Priceline.com Priceline is a company what is what is the nature of business of Priceline um, there are 
some uh, customers, right? You can be a customer, I can be a customer, and the customers can be anywhere. Let's say I am, I am this customer, I'm in uh, New Jersey. There is another customer, let's say in UK. There is another customer that is in uh, Mumbai, in India, right? And then there is another customer uh, which is in LA, in California, and then there is another customer that can be in Tokyo, right? Okay, they can, and you know, I drew them, you know, in this order, but it, it, you know, they are physically, uh, you know, apart right uh, they one is in New Jersey the other one is UK so they are physically geographically very very uh, apart from one another and they basically from their machines or or from the devices like uh, a smartphone think about it as a smartphone my drawing is very bad but this is a iPhone let's say or uh, I happen to have a note uh, Samsung note and I love my phone um, so, um, I do a lot of uh, hotel bookings from my cell phone, right? I mean, we have we we have trainings uh, going on all over, and uh, when I go, I book my hotels uh, in advance uh, for day one and day two uh, because uh, unless you drive, you really don't know the. Uh, proximity as where it is so I try to be as close to my clients as, as possible so I I book my hotel and then later on you might have to change it so I will book it from my cell phone so the idea here is accessibility from a device so a mobile device a mobile device can access this this price line and uh, a computer can access this price line okay when they access price line Priceline as a company, um, what do they do? Their business model is, I mean, I guess out of everyone who is here, almost everyone knows what Priceline is. If you don't, then please go to Priceline and, and find out what it is. They are they are nothing but they are brokers, right? They are they are somebody who connects, right? Uh, consumers to providers. Right, that's that's their job to connect consumers to provider. I'm a consumer now. I need to, you know, book a hotel room. So uh, there are some providers. The provider here can be uh, Hilton. Uh, it can be uh, Marriott, right? Marriott, and it can be uh, you can fill in the blank. Uh, I don't even know what uh, others are out there. So. This can be that. Or if I am making a reservation uh, for an airline, it can be United, right? It can be American Airlines. It can be whatever, right? Uh, Delta, right? Okay. The idea here is um, you are connecting from your device and you want to book a hotel room. Now, does the price line own these hotels? Hilton, Marriott, and let's say Motel uh, 6 or whatever, right? So do they own it? No. So that means that they don't own it, but they are providing some data from Hilton to a consumer. What kind of data? Well, uh, if Hilton has hotels uh, all over the world, right? So now Priceline job is to have a presentable UI right so they will have a form wherein they will say that okay select the location so location would be one of the things and somebody would type either a zip code or a name of the city and all that so once we type that once we type that location and then the date of book uh, of of when you need it and for how many days so once you type let's say I'm looking for a uh, location is uh, New York right and the dates are December uh, 24th of 2016 good luck with that booking I mean you know, the whole world is gonna be in New York around that time right because uh, you know Christmas Eve and New Year's uh, is the time holidays everyone is here so 
I happen to live in this part of the world for past 20, 22 years, and I know how crazy New York becomes uh, around holidays, right? I mean, to take, uh, uh, to move two blocks in the city, it takes about a good, you know, hour for you to do that, depending on what part of the city you are in. Anyway, so coming back, uh, Priceline job is to have a UI, right? And think about it, think about it now. Uh, from my phone, this is what they are going to show me on my phone right on my phone I entered this and I say uh, go or whatever when I click on that what happens it's going to take this information and it has to send that information to every to every affiliate that is a partner that is out there so what they do is they will take this data and then they can send the data to whoever they are partnered with to find out the inventory uh, on that day available inventory on that day Chances are in uh, Hilton in New York City, probably there are like 20 Hiltons in New York City. But if I happen to choose a remote place, let's say uh, Reston uh, in Virginia, maybe there is only one Hilton there, right? In that town, there is only one Hilton. And chances are that Hilton is, uh, there is no availability. So there's always, whenever uh, you, you are querying something, it has to connect and it has to bring the inventory. So think about it in its simplest form, right? Uh, rather than Hilton and all that, uh, let's say uh, they have a, they have this math, right? And then we will, we will, we will, after we understand about this math web service, then we will convert it into Hilton and then all this and understand. So you have a, a need to, you have an app from Priceline and it, it will help you add and this is, let's say, uh, let's say this is uh, um, your total bill, right? And Priceline will help you compute the gratuity, let's say. So this is the tax. Uh, and so you are adding in here, total is $200. And there is a 7% tax on it. So uh seven percent tax so this is going to give you the total of 214 dollars and let's say gratuity here uh calculate gratuity at 20 percent on uh 214 so immediately it does that so behind the scenes there's some math going on there's some math going on so let's say there is a web service that is going to do in fact we will be building this web service and we will be testing this web service uh, because there are many applications out there that will help you to compute your gratuity based on you know how much is the total. So if you're sitting in in a bar or sitting in a restaurant and then you you had a bill of like uh, uh, five hundred and fourteen dollars and you quickly want to compute uh, like how much is going to be the gratuity on that and if you're not too good in the math uh, in your head then you need a little app to do that and let's say we have to build a web service for that app so that it can give you the accurate information of that. So the need for the web service it can be uh, 100 uh, different reasons to build that web service. Now, as far as testing that web service, I will show you SOAP UI how it does that. But let me uh, show you how to connect these bits and pieces. Why the need for this web service? So uh, consumers uh, that could be mobile apps or laptops or desktops could be consuming that web service. So web service basically is uh, nothing but the ability for two entities to communicate. So here is your price line. Here is your price line talking to, talking to uh, Hilton, right? So when, let's say one of the functions is availability. Availability is operation we have to check. So availability will expect what operation, uh, um, uh, Parameter one, parameter one can be location, right? Location. So you have to give New York. And parameter two is date, right? So you have to give the date of the uh, booking of this room. Parameter three can be uh, like number of passing uh, or, or number of, uh, if it is airline tickets, number of, uh, or if it is a hotel, I mean, how many rooms you have. So rooms, number of rooms. Because if you're going with the family and then there are like uh, three kids in the family and uh, 
two adults. So then you cannot be putting all five people in the same room, right? So you have to have two rooms. So maybe this is around Christmas time. Uh, even getting one room is 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 difficult. So two rooms. So that could also be a factor for getting that reservation, right? So you have to enter that. So that could be the third parameter. So the idea here is you have to pass parameters, right? You have to pass parameters. So from price line here, uh, from price line here, you are passing all that parameter to Helter. So from price line, you're passing the parameter. You're calling a method called availability. And that availability will need one, two, three parameters in here. And then there will be some code that will uh, be some uh, checking in the database and all that the developer would write. And then he will return something. The returning would be what? Availability uh, plus, yes, four rooms available, right? Available. And each room is going to be $247.99, right? That's the minimum price around that time in a Hilton in New York, let's say. That's the minimum right so this is returning something so the idea here is you have to send something you have to get something back now the question is when you are sending something that information that is going you have to know the data type of it and how many parameters you are sending and all that goes in XML goes in XML right so we have to know a little bit of XML to send the information Right. And when the information comes back, it can come back as XML, right? Depending on what web service it is. If it is XML web service, XML based web service, the, the, the other web service is REST, REST API, right? REST web service. At that time, you might have to get the information back from that in something called JSON. So now you would say, oh, what is JSON? I don't even know what JSON is, right? So, but it is nothing but it's the response that we are getting. So when you see the response coming in a JSON, you have to not only understand that, you have to parse that and all that. So in a nutshell, in a nutshell, this is basically what this web service is uh, going to be. Uh, I don't want to make this a theory class all along, so we have to do something to test it but down the road we have to talk a lot about uh, some technical things um, like uh, uh, hang on for a second we got to be talking about uh, uh, you know your your uh, web servers right so we will be talking about something called IAS or Tomcat or Apache right, uh, JBoss uh, or uh, Web uh, Sphere, right, or Web Logic. Uh, uh, I mean, the list uh, kind of like goes uh, out and out. Um, so we got to be looking into, we got to be picking up one of the web servers and talking a little bit more about it because uh, uh, when you have your server, when you have your server, let's say this is the Priceline server, right, your web service will be sitting somewhere on this on this file system so this will have an end point an end point is nothing but the location where this web service is deployed so you will have the end point so once you have the end point then when we call on that end, end point and when we are requesting so the keyword here is when we are requesting, right? Uh, what uh, when we are requesting to a call to an operation, right? So operation is nothing but that method. When you send a request, when you send a request, you have to pass parameters, right? With the correct data type, encapsulated in something called this is going in using a protocol called SOAP protocol meaning that whatever you are passing uh, if it is if it is XML based web service right then that information will go in an envelope right this is called a SOAP simple object access protocol 
so in an envelope the information will go right that information will go in an envelope and once that information goes in an envelope you are this is called a request when you are sending a request it will go to price line to that endpoint and at that endpoint your web server which could be anyone from this list is going to parse meaning that it is going to open open that envelope which envelope that soap envelope right and it is going to look inside it something very similar to let's say uh, today we cannot even comprehend we cannot even you know understand this but if you go back in time and most of you cannot go back in time uh, and relate to it but I can because I have come from that time but probably you would say oh I was not even born uh, if you go back like uh, 20 25 30 years when there was no internet internet came out what 1996 before that there was no internet so um, when uh, you have to send something to somebody right you used envelopes you used an envelope inside the envelope you would take a picture you would uh, put that picture and send it to your grandma and the, the envelope will take seven days to go to India or, or wherever it has to your grandma will be very happy to open the envelope now imagine visualize this with your eyes closed she has to open the envelope she can tear it she can open it and once she open it then inside the envelope is your picture now in between from New York to Mumbai or wherever you come from in India or from any place in the world the postmaster or the mailman had no idea what was in there maybe he bent it a little bit to find out if there is a check or if there is a candy or if there is a picture if there is a check but he would not know anything about it same thing happens in here when the data is moving over the internet people who are looking at this at this packet they will have no idea of what is inside it and inside it is this information these parameters that that are being passed which is the location being New York and the date being uh, December 24th number of rooms being two all that information is hidden so all that is like that picture that grandma is going to see so the grandma here is your web server the web server will parse meaning that open that envelope and look into that soap information that soap protocol is I mean the driving protocol all over the world is red means stop right I mean red means stop I mean you know that's the, how it is supposed to be I mean if you go to India it's the other way I mean not to put down India but uh, red means go I mean <laughs> green means there is no stop there you have to go keep going <laughs> you, you gotta keep going there red I mean the guy is like what is happening I mean red means stop and the, they will honk you like anything because uh, even the bus drivers a big huge bus from the government he is honking there's a red, red. <laughs> anyways so coming back um, there's a protocol protocol rules that you have to follow the rules are traffic rules is red stop green go the rules here of SOAP simple object access protocol is when you send the data the data will be in XML format and uh, first comes like you know which particular operation that you are requesting then comes you know which particular parameter that you are passing then comes the value of that so all that is inside that envelope that's a protocol so your grandma web server is going to open that parse and get the data and call that web service pass the data to the function of the web service web service will run and give you the result and the results are again sent back depending on how you want the results again they can come back as uh, soap envelope and then it comes back and the device uh, can be your phone it can be your um, computer it can be your laptop now uh, many years ago uh, XML based web services were the only one but today because of uh, the uh, exponential growth uh, in mobile devices uh, XML based web services have become a little bit slower so they are uh, you know requesting that we use uh, something called uh, rest services that we will talk about and the rest services will send the data back in this format which is much more uh, faster and friendlier for mobile devices so uh, it has to you have to go and look into what kind of data is, is coming back and 
then do your assertions to test if the data is the right data or not in our testing right so that's what we got to do so uh, think about for us to do we have to have an idea of the endpoint endpoint is where the web service is deployed right and then you have to have the idea of what web services that we are testing and inside the web service uh, we'll be looking into uh, the operations the operations is uh, addition subtraction or uh, you know availability of a room and uh, actual booking of the room and then there could be like change in the reservation there could be canceling a reservation there could be hundred different you know um, uh, basically operations that we have to test uh, so to begin with uh, now we will go into a tool and we will do the testing now before we do the testing I have been talking for a good hour, a uh, little more than an hour. So let me ask if you have any questions so far. Let me take your question so far. There might be one or two questions that's going on in your head right, right at this moment. Uh, while you, you formulate your questions, let me uh, go ahead and start this tool. So at this point, we know as how to download the tool. So I'm starting the tool. When you start the tool, uh, we have to uh, go right from the beginning and the beginning is inside uh, your SOAP UI uh, open source tool the current version is 5.3.0 we have to begin with we have to begin with here it is showing me here it is showing me as you can see it is showing me so many things right so I will begin as if there is nothing so we have to begin with the workforce workspace workforce workspace right so first thing is let me just write down here first thing is uh, you will create a uh, create a workspace now uh, what is a workspace workspace is an area where you will store uh, all your projects right okay so I will create a workspace this I will call it day one uh, December 2016 right so that's the workspace now you have to save the workspace so to save the workspace go to that soap UI uh, soap UI uh, training folder soap UI training folder inside the soap UI training see here I created soap UI underscore workspaces create that folder it will not be there you have to create one and after you create I have so many from the past I have so many right so you will see it as an empty so I'm creating day one December 2016 workspace and when I hit OK it says that are you sure we are looking at a different workspace here day seven rest service testing are you sure you want to switch the workspace do you have to save anything before that I don't have to save anything so project for uh, this has been more uh, so no so here is my workspace right so we are starting with the workspace so that's my workspace um, uh, Nimi is asking a question does a tester store it or the developer store it uh, store what uh, Nimi w uh, store what does a tester store it or the developer store what 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 are we trying to store uh, okay, no files in the workspace. Now anything that I'm showing you right now, um, it is all for you as a tester. Developer is nowhere nearby. He is not involved. You have to do everything what I'm showing you right now, right? Because we are using a tool, SOAP UI. SOAP UI is a tester's tool. So developer would not even know what SOAP UI tool is. You are going to be the master of this tool. He or she as developers, when they look at it, they have zero knowledge probably of what it is because they don't know what it is. All right. Okay. So coming back. So here is the workspace that we have created. Inside the workspace, inside the workspace, we have to go and we have to create a project. So while creating a project, uh, there can be two types of project. There can be a SOAP project or REST project. Now, um, beforehand, you will be given a documentation that will tell the web service that you are going to be testing whether it is a soap web service or a rest web service now today is day one uh, I have given you enough here in terms of uh, 
uh, what we uh, have seen so far. Uh, so I will not spend more time uh, trying to uh, tell you the differences between uh, SOAP and uh, REST at this time. We'll defer it to the next class. So right now, uh, just rely uh, till tomorrow. Uh, you know, just stay with me when I say that you will be told whether it is a REST web service or SOAP web service. So right now we are testing a SOAP web service. So we will take the SOAP uh, as the project. So uh, give it a name. So let's say if we are testing and today I'll take a simple project and tomorrow we'll take some complex uh, projects that are being used in the real life. So tomorrow uh, will be your actual real testing that is going to happen tomorrow with some uh, very uh, advanced web services that are being used in the industry today. And that's what I will be taking and I will be testing tomorrow. So today I'll lay out the foundation with a simple web service. So the project name is, uh, let's say, math web service. In real life, this could be like a mortgage uh, testing web service, or it could be like a shopping cart uh, web service, uh, or it could be like, you know, any business uh, web service that's what it is going to be today it's a simple web service so math web service project let's say and then uh, visdel is the endpoint as where that web service is deployed now there are departments uh, and today uh, there is something called devops um, now devops uh, basically uh, is responsible for uh, the deployments, right? Uh, so they will be deploying your uh, web service because the developers will basically give the web service to the operations uh, and then those guys, uh, basically DevOps engineers will be deploying it and making it available for whoever wants to use it as a part of the operations. That includes the uh, testing team. So bottom line is deployment happens, uh, some test beds are created and in the test bed, uh, the web service will be deployed and you will be given the endpoint. So the endpoint is nothing but the location, the location of where uh, this web service is. So it will be some URL uh, that will be given to you. Now, um, remember uh, I explained you about this very briefly about this and I told you that tomorrow, whatever you're seeing here in less than two, three minutes, you should be able to understand all of this, right? So this is nothing but the visual document. So they will give you this visual document. So you have to take the wisdom. So here is the wisdom for the math. So I'm going to take that and come here and see here initial wisdom. So you have to paste it there. So step number one here was to create a workspace. Step number two, uh, create a SOAP project, right? And uh, in the SOAP project, uh, name of the project and then the wisdom wisdom right of the project so i am putting the wisdom of the project then after that take this as take this as the default because today i will not explain you this tomorrow i will explain you so create request test suite and all that test suite nothing but a collection of test cases so today we will just take some simple test cases tomorrow we'll have a in-depth uh, test suite to test uh, so right now i will just hit okay now notice what happens in this area once i hit okay basically what happens is i am sitting here in new jersey right and i my test training right.net is my server and this server is uh, located in um, uh, San Francisco, right? So my web service, this is my math web service, I have deployed in San Francisco. So any tester, whether you are sitting in your house in Dallas or Chicago or in uh, Singapore, Australia, uh, New Zealand, UK, wherever you are testing it, you would give this path and from that, from Australia, when you hit OK, you are getting connected. This is connection now. You will be getting connected and what you see here, what you see here, what you see here is basically nothing but, and let me 
can do that. Nothing but this is the project and inside the project, when you click on that, this will give you the interface of that project. Now, anytime you have, uh, you don't know what this is, what this is, what this is, uh, keep an eye here. Keep an eye here. This will tell you what you are looking at right now. What you're looking at right now, this is what it is going to tell you. So, um, um, basically, you, when you click here, take a look what this will say here. This is nothing but the workspace, okay? And this is not nothing but the project. And this is the interface. Now, interface, when you sit inside a car, what is your interface, right? Uh, the steering is the interface. I mean, you will touch this uh, steering. Without the steering, you cannot even move, right? I mean, you cannot drive. You cannot do anything. So this is your interface, right? So interface of a web service exposes. Expose means that shows, renders, displays to you, right? Gives you access to what inside the interface, if you expand it, it gives you access to what? So what is this? This is the operation. So it will give you access inside the interface. You'll have the operations. So how many operations do you see here? One, two, three, four, five. And what, what is an operation coming back to this document? An operation is nothing but, you know, these functions that we have to test. If I have to know the addition, addition uh, function, if everything is right, number one is 100, number two is 200, maybe the guy, rather than using a plus, he might have used multiplication here. So uh, by mistake. So there will be a bug because addition should give 100 and 200 should give 300 and it is giving you uh, 200,000 because 100 and 200 uh, times if you multiply, you know, that is 2,000 or whatever, 220,000. So that's what you, you will be getting. You will be getting 20,000. So which is which is wrong because he, he made one mistake in here, right? So we are basically checking this. This is a function which is nothing but an operation. That's what we are checking. So addition is an operation. So uh, the operations inside a web service are... Uh, rendered to you or displayed to you inside an interface. So inside an interface, we have one, two, three, four. Let's take a look inside this edition as an operation. What do we have? Once I expand, I have a SOAP SOAP request that I have to pass. If I double click on that, right, you will see on the right hand side, you see that there are two parts to it. If I expand, there are two parts. There is a part on the left. This is the left side and this is the right side. Right side is empty. Right side is nothing but this is going to be left side will this is the envelope. This is the envelope that you have to send. You have to send this envelope all the way to the server and the server will give you the the envelope as the response response. So sending is called a request. You are sending a request and you will be getting a response. You'll be getting a response. Now, let's see when we are sending this request, the request is going in this in, in this manner. So let me just copy because it's very small. We cannot see it. So I copied it. Let me open it in Notepad so that we could see how the request is going. So if I format and take a bigger font and if you look into it, take a look into what we have here. We have all this is all this is XML, right? All this is XML. So if you see this, this is the top line, and this is called this is called the root root node. So there is a soap envelope, right? End of soap envelope. So this is inside this this envelope, inside this envelope. We are dealing with if there is a header, this is the header information, and then there is a body. And inside the body, right now, I am dealing with addition, right? And I'll tell you what is this TEM in a minute. But this, we are dealing with addition right now. And addition takes, if you see here, there's a question mark, there's a question mark. Addition is taking two parameters. There is an A and then there is an B. So here, question mark means that placeholder. Or it's like a variable that you could put a value inside it. So if I put 100 in it, and if I put 200 in it, so I, I am doing what? Passing the parameters. The parameters that the developer named is A and B. 
I mean, shame on him for naming it as A and B. He should have said number one, number two or something, but it, that's fine. I mean, what do we care? As long as we are understanding that this is the, this inside, a, inside the envelope, there is a header, there is a body. Inside the body, we are dealing with addition as the function or the operation, and it takes two parameters. This is the first parameter. This is the second parameter. Now, I entered the value 100 and 200. This I entered in notepad, but let me just go back in here, and in this question mark, let me enter 100, and here, let me enter 200. Now, I need to send it to my server. My server is training, right? This is on my machine in New Jersey. I have entered. I'm sending the test now. Once I click on this green button, I'm sending it to my server and my server will do the addition and give me the results back here. And the results that are coming back again will come back in an envelope and it will show me a result of 300. I hope if it shows me 300 and one, two, three, 300 and lo and behold, that means that my web service is working, is working, right? Okay. Now, if you look at it, this is the SOAP envelope. This is the body, right? And if you look at here, we had addition. So this is addition's response, addition response. And addition result is 300. Okay, very good. Can I send like 1,000 and 2,000? Yeah, I will get a result of 3,000, 3,000. Can I send like... Uh, that one and that one and get some result. Yes, I am getting some results. But now uh, we are getting these results. And if you add this in your calculator, probably I, I put too many zeros. Yeah. So, right. Uh, now let's make this. This is $100.25 and $200.75 and now we know the answer to this three hundred and one dollar it should show let's see oh whoa so we have a problem here we have a problem the problem is it is not showing me the result but it is showing me some fault it is showing me some fault so what we have to do is we basically have to go ahead and do some assertions when we are testing it we have to do some assertions and find out like whatever it is it is sending is it sending the right information or not Right. Okay. Now, um, uh, let me take a question. Jasmeet uh, is asking, is it possible to increase the font of this? Uh, uh, hang on for a second. I will go in here and uh, preferences and editor. Uh, XML number select font. Uh, the um, Usually, uh, yeah. Um, okay, hang on for a second. Um, Um, hang on for a second. Uh, where did it give me that error? I K. So if you are setting XML. Hmm. Um. Uh, no. Um. I'll I'll do it uh, sometime because I have to go into uh and uh, because I cannot see the files, so we I have to uh give permissions to see the files and then give permission. So I'll I'll set it up. Uh. uh you know, uh, for your next class, uh, I'll set it up. Uh, so uh, basically what it is, is uh, it's, it's, we are passing something and then we are receiving something back. Uh, uh, hang on for a second. I think I froze myself. Uh, 
here. I froze myself. Um, I froze myself. Okay, so basically, uh, what it is is uh, you will. Uh, I will. I have to open that workspace. Uh, switch workspace. And the workspace that we were working on, uh, I don't know if I saved that workspace. Anyway, so let me just take the opportunity to do it one more time. So I'll create a new workspace. I'll call it day one, um, in December 2016 and uh, I do that and uh, I say save um, and I switch it uh, and that's my workspace come in here create a new project project name I will call it as uh, day one uh, math web service project right and over here I have to take my uh, Vizda that I will share with all of you. Hang on for a second. Uh, that's the Vizda that I will be sharing with all of you. And uh, we will be adding this Vizda here and hitting OK. It is connecting right now. Oh, I added a different one. I added a different one. Uh, so let me remove that and add a new so project this is day one math web service project and I wanted to take this one the math one so this is the math one the one that I'm taking I, I will I will do it tomorrow that's a bigger one so we go with the math one and I hit OK and as you can see here uh, we have uh, two interfaces so I'm going to open this interface and have addition and open the request of the addition. Once I open the request of the addition um, here is what we are seeing unfortunately I could not increase the font but it is nothing but this this one so you have you have the soap envelope that's what you have you have the header and in the body in the addition I have to supply A and B I have to supply so for A I would put uh, 100 or 1000 and for B I would put 5000 and when I run it I will get my 6000 I'm getting my 6000 that's what I uh, we got now we not only have to do it for addition, we have to do it for division, we have to uh, do it for multiplication, subtraction that you would do. I mean subtraction is as easy as you have let's say 100 and you want to subtract 50 from it and the answer should be 50 and that's what we have. Now uh, this is still manual testing that is going on. So tomorrow what we will do is we will do some data driven testing where we will pass the data for all this coming from uh, our uh, Excel. So if we go into SOAP UI and if I take the test data, we will be taking some test data for whatever, right? Uh, so there is a different web service for petitions, right? So uh, we are filing a petition for something. So we are taking some data from there or we are uh, taking, let's say uh, here, we are filing some uh, data here. So we are taking some credit card data. And as you can see, there's a lot of data for a, a credit card type and the credit card numbers and all that. So we'll be taking that data depending on what web services. For the math, it will be as simple as this wherein uh, number one will be this, number two will be this, expected result will be four, we will capture the actual result and we will say what is the test status, whether it's a pass or a fail. So let's say if it is 1000 and this one and we are expecting it 3000. Now intentionally if you see a 10 and a 1L, 
uh, and the result is 21. One L, it should it should fail. So the question is, if I manually put like one one L right now, uh, of course I know that it it will fail. It will give me a soap fault and all that. Uh, but uh, how do you do it with automation? How do you get the data from there and pass it to the script and all that? That's basically what we will be uh, doing uh, tomorrow. And tomorrow, um, we will be taking uh, a bigger uh, test cases. As an example, uh, let me take that and uh, quickly uh, show you uh, that uh, new soap. And this is just the preparation for day two which is, uh, let's say, a company called Pipe Systems uh, um, Project, right? And this is their uh, web service. And if I do that, and as you can see, uh, in the ePay system, we have so many that we have to be testing, right? We have so many uh, web services that we have to be testing. So this is more or less for a credit card company. So if you are making a sale for a credit card, you have to be supplying n number of things in here, right? So we got to be, this is bigger, this is more bigger than this one where we have only 102 arguments. Here, we have more number of arguments that we have to be passing. So when we have more number of arguments that we have to be passing, and if, if the data is coming from someplace else, how do we do all that is what we'll be covering tomorrow. And uh, tomorrow, uh, we will be looking at the pro version. And I will also be showing you a uh, lot of information tomorrow about, uh, see here, I, I took you uh, in here and I showed you something like that in here. So tomorrow, I'll show you a little bit more in terms of, uh, in terms of uh, what these HTTP settings and stuff like that. So, and what is the properties? So, if when you go in here, when you go into any one of this, right, we have to go and we have to set some of the properties. For that, we basically have to uh, go and we have to create, we have to create what is called a test suite. So, uh, just as an example, uh, test suite. And we will be getting into some details tomorrow with multiple test cases. And when we deal with multiple test cases, we have to deal with the logs of that test cases. And there are different types of logs. The SOAP UI log, HTTP log. So I'll explain you everything about what is all this. So uh, tomorrow, when we're going to be uh, doing this, uh, when you look at when you look at these things. Tomorrow, you should be able to find out exactly what is happening. What is this HTTP 200? What is the purpose of HTTP 200? Because in the interviews, they will ask you, um, what is uh, an immediate uh, you know, way of finding out if a web service is testing? If you don't even have to use a tool, what is the HTTP status code that can tell you that uh, a web service is failing? So you have to say HTTP 500. So what is 500? Right? What is 400? What is 300? What is 200? So we're going to be going over all that and we will be able to find out like what kind of web servers uh, we are using, what kind of logs that uh, are getting generated and uh, how to parse those logs and all that. All that we will be covering in, in uh, tomorrow's class. Uh, that's what we'll be doing. Now, let me take some questions that you have uh, for today before I let you go. So. Uh, while again you are coming up with your questions and I want you to type your questions while you're coming up with the questions uh, um, let me uh, go ahead and re-engage uh, uh, the rest of you uh, with uh, summarizing it uh, a web service is nothing but uh, some code that is written by a developer using any one of these programming languages they are creating a project and some classes uh, uh, this is the developer is doing. We have no idea of how this is done. We have no idea. We have no idea of how this is done because we are not interested in that because it is a developer's job. What we are interested in is what kind of operations we have to test. So they have to give us the list of the operations. They provide us with the list of the operations through this documentation. So Wisdom. So we got to be known how uh, to understand wisdom. So this is the wisdom. Again, I told you I will give you an uh, uh, you know, uh, explanation, clear explanation of this tomorrow. So uh, we will talk about what is a wisdom. And uh, after looking at a wisdom, 
we will be dissecting it it is all in XML and once we do that we'll get an idea of what needs to be tested and whatever we are testing basically is all about uh, sending some data so uh, we will be sending the data as you are seeing here we are sending the data um, we are sending the data in the XML envelope we are sending the data so this is the XML envelope that we will be sending the data in and we are expecting some response so this is the response that we receive so the response that we receive this is the request and this is the response that uh, we have received and the response that we have received right now it is just this one 6000 so 100 or, or 1000 and 2000 and 5000 is 6000 that's what uh, we received as the response because this was the request so let me take the request as this request for this request we got this response so for this request of 1000 and 5000 for the addition result we got the 6000 as the response okay now this is simply manual testing what we have to do is we have to take up a case where we have to do this testing wherein as an example uh, if I go in here this is the testing that we are doing so if I open it up and uh, I show it to you this is the test that we would be running uh, and we should be able to find out as how we can pass all this information now you know that this is a soap envelope right up to this part is a soap envelope this is a header this is a body and we are testing the sale and inside sale we are passing this strcc we have to pass some number and this str this we have to pass some something this we have to pass something this we have to pass this we have to pass and once we pass we should be getting some response now there are this is nothing but the credit card information and if you see in the credit card we talked about the credit card information being not limited to uh, just that but it could be uh, anything as an example uh, these are the different credit cards so I'm not going to be manually doing this testing wherein we take that number manually and then this is the manual number we put it in here this is the uh, month we put it in here no we have to do automation so for automation we have to be creating some test cases and some test suites and all that and that's uh, where the real action will begin uh, tomorrow so uh, let me uh, take your questions uh, right now so I'll read these questions and I'll answer them um, uh, how do you know from the request what parameters you need to send uh, it is written in the XML somewhere yeah uh, Wendy asked a question like how do you know which parameters and all that all that information is here uh, in the visual and tomorrow I will explain it to you just to give you an idea see here in addition in addition you are expecting two parameters there's a parameter called a and there's a parameter called B and the data type that you have to pass is integer 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 a is an integer B is an integer so you have to follow this this documentation so tomorrow I'll explain you how to parse this in terms of the request for addition you when you open it will tell you how many parameters what are the name of the parameters what is the data type of the parameters this is how you will uh, do that okay let me read the second uh, question here one second uh, um, one second these boxes are too small for me to read uh, um, uh, how do you Muhammad uh, tomorrow access or video uh, okay no problem uh, yeah um, do me a favor uh, for those of you who uh, have registered and are willing to take this class because what is happening is uh, um, we have this is a holiday time correct so this is a holiday time so not everybody is willing to take the classes during the holiday time so what we have done is uh, uh, we have scheduled two classes we have scheduled this one uh, which is a uh, during December 10th we are starting uh, and this is today and it will go Saturday Sunday of course uh, we will break during Christmas and New Year 
but if you are too tight, you can't take it. The next one is coming. This is a weekday class. Uh, and this is more of a boot camp, meaning that it will start Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So four days. And then the next week again, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So it will be done in two weeks. So it's a boot camp starting January 16th and it will be end, ending uh, starting here January 16th, ending on January uh, 26th. So 16, 17, 18, 19, 23, 24, 25, 26. So it's a two week. So in January, it's a boot camp. So if you cannot do uh, this because of the holidays, you can take the other one, right? So anyone, uh, even though you are a paid student, I want you to uh, write to us at trainingwrite at gmail.com. Tomorrow you will not get an um, invitation uh, even though you are a paid student uh, unless you write to us that you want to take it. You want to take it, right? So we are, we are basically, we want to find out if you are uh, taking during the holiday time because we don't want you to come back later on and say that oh I could not attend because of the holidays uh, that's why we want you to uh, send an email that yes I want to continue in this uh, weekend class uh, in December so we will send you the link for the rest of you folks uh, who are deciding whether to take it or not uh, this is how it is going to be and uh, you could go and you could uh, Purchase it uh, from here. Go there. So you are courses. So go. Right. So UI, or you could do it from here. Buy now. Buy now, and uh, you will uh, buy the course. And once you purchase the course, we will send you the link to come to the class tomorrow. All right. Okay. So that's that. Uh, I am. Uh, the email address is trainingwrite at gmail.com. All your correspondence should be sent to this email, trainingwrite at gmail.com. Trainingwrite at gmail.com. That's where you send all your correspondence. Uh, don't send it to any other address but that. All right. Okay. Um, so that's about it for today. I'll let you go. If you have any other questions, uh, I'll be more than happy to answer your questions. Uh, Otherwise, um, I'll let you go. We will see you again, same place, same time tomorrow. Uh, but everyone, uh, and Wendy, uh, I understand this is a December holiday time, but if you want to attend, um, write to us uh, and, and let us know. Um, and uh, if you want to attend the January class, that's fine too. Um, so based on uh, whoever would be emailing us, we will be sending them the invite only for the paid students. Okay, thank you. Have a good one. And I will see you same place, same time tomorrow. Have a good night.